Hello everyone, James Donaldson here with the Contemporary Gentleman. And great ways to support us are by buying our Spice series, links below. And uh, a good way to support us is follow us on Instagram, but it's also a good way to see what it is we're up to. We have plenty of posts with additional thoughts or, you know, maybe summing up an entire video in one thought. That's just a brief paragraph, etc. So, check us out. much all the suppressors we have right now. They were acquired through third parties. So we have no affiliation with any of the companies that made them and we do have some videos on them. I would say probably none of our thoughts have changed since releasing those videos. Uh, one of the videos was very recent. Uh, furthermore, all you need to know is we're going to cover why we wanted to check some of them out and then what our thoughts were afterwards. So uh, this actually stemmed from a conversation I was having with someone on Instagram they came up that I had experience with technically nine different suppressors, ten total, and they were kind of wondering my thoughts and what we'd learned from them. So after doing that, I thought I'd make a good video. Stay tuned. All right, so can number one. The system really didn't even fit in the frame. Uh, Salvo 12, and it's neat, but it's a very niche can. Um, Basically, we really recommend you only buy this if you have several cans already or just shoot shotguns a lot. Uh, shameless plug, this was the subject of a recent video as mentioned earlier. This can is super fun with subs. Cards on the table, but it's also not very impressive whatsoever with normal shotgun rounds, especially turkey hunting rounds, which is kind of what we were interested in this can for. We did acquire it as it was an interesting concept to us, and uh, we bought into the overhype on it. Plus, originally, we had a goal to hunt every animal we could with this shotgun with this can on it, but it didn't pan out. So as far as our recommendation, uh, basically, I always recommend a suppressor be used if you're firing a gun indoors, so there's those mount guys. Um, so so on hunting, you know, maybe if you shoot subsonic loads for target. Again, it's really great on subsonic rounds, um, but at the end of the day, you know, if you shoot shotguns a lot and it's something that interests you, by all means, get it. 
I just want to be very clear about the sound performance of this can. Because again, there was a lot of overhype on it. I'm not saying it's a bad can or that it's poor quality. It just doesn't live up to the hype. Next is the GM45. This can we originally were interested in because it was one of the few suppressors were on the site. It, rec it said it was for 10 millimeter, so big thing to keep in mind. Now, and additionally, the concept of monocore can sounded good to us. I like it for what it does and is, but in most cases I wouldn't recommend it. Partly because at this time I don't recommend monocore cans, especially pistol ones. That said, for specific use, I like monocore design. As if there was a need to dismantle it in the field, it has few parts and they're all larger, so the danger of losing the parts is small to zero. However, if I was to do it over again, I would likely get an Obsidian 45. Keep in mind, I have yet to use one. I say that name because of my research. The reason being, it is a heavy duty can. It can shorten, I can shorten it for use in the woods on my 10mm Glock 40. Um, Still be loud, but it will take the edge off. The shortness being useful for maneuverability, as well as it'll cut down on gas blowback. Blowback on a 10 millimeter is no joke. If you've shot one suppressed with the right round, you'll know. However, if I wanted to, I could also lengthen it to gain sound attenuation. I have a video on this can as well, not to mention my Glock 40 in general. What's more, this can has run poorly on my 9 millimeter Glocks, other than the 17L. I will add, to be fair, it has run impressively well on my HK P30SK. I think this can be boiled down to hammer versus striker fired guns, but also the unlocking time. Glock barrels unlock for the slide much sooner than many other guns. This means the system hasn't built up the energy to overcome that friction in some cases. Meanwhile, HK designs most of its pistols to host a suppressor, so you're looking at a later unlocking time. Food for thought. As far as our recommendation, this is another one that we recommend under very specific circumstances. Uh, the weight being back here is nice, especially on a long gun, but on a gun in general, again, you're not seeking sound performance with this can. Uh, we like it, we're gonna hold on to it, but just understand what you're getting yourself into. They can be found pretty inexpensive on GunBroker. I wouldn't recommend it for a first can, but again, if you're looking to supplement some kind of system for this, not a bad idea, but if you can, check out an Obsidian 45 first. Next is the Gemtech 1, a 30 cal suppressor. We love its versatility, both in the fact that it's 30 cal, so it can do many different rounds, but also the fact that it's able to be done with QD, so their Gemtech's bylock system, or it can have the back switched out to become a direct thread. Some have complained about the mounting, but I've had zero issues other than some carbon lock. As for calibers, it works on everything you'd expect it to, as I said. The list that's on their site is over 96 calibers. I know, because I counted them. Not the quietest can, but I feel it has a lot going for it. It is so calm rated, and has a lot of other accolades that make it very tough. The only downside to this can is Gemtech is now owned by Smith & Wesson, and from personal experience, customer service has declined. That said, depending on when you're watching this video, it may have improved again. Also, this is a can that can be found for a very low price on GunBroker sometimes. I've seen it as low as $400. I would say a reasonable price is in the 700 range. If you see it, I recommend you buy it. I don't believe you'll be disappointed. I have a video on this can as well. So as stated, Gemtech 1, recommended. And the next can, the Gemtech Aurora 2. I have two of these as well as a video on this can. This is another very niche can. It has its purpose, but not a good first buy. The purpose I see for these cans is when you want a suppressed weapon because if used, it will be used indoors. However, that same weapon needs to be kept in a confined space such as a safe or a drawer, etc. This is a limited use can as it is filled with eight neoprene wipes and three petroleum jelly filled spacer baffles. All this works to help contain and cool the gases. This means that each shot fired, you are reducing the can's performance. The core of these cans will last anywhere from 15 to 40 rounds depending on the ammo used. Be advised, you must use ball ammo because it is wet from the petroleum jelly as well as has the spacer, or excuse me, the wipes. Now you must, as I said, you must use ball ammo only and no, it was designed around 165 grain 9mm, which is hard to find. That said, it works great with 147 grain as well. I like having them laying around and I got them very inexpensively. One of them is on my home defense gun, which lives in the safe, and the other hangs around until I go on a trip, and then my concealed carry gun will become my home defense or room defense gun at night. It is important to note, once the core is shot out, the gun will continue to cycle. 
If that wasn't the case, it was a non-starter for me. Do note, I tested this myself on my Glock 19, so you may consider testing that on your gun if you have something different. Aurora 2, recommended in specific use cases. Gemtech G5, 556 dedicated can. This is a 556 dedicated can, as I said. This is also a bylock mounted can, but only bylock. It cannot be converted to mount via direct thread. Very quiet for 556, but super old technology and horrible with gas management. I needed to put a 308 buffer spring from Springco in my Mark 18 to help control the gassing issues. This can confirmed for me that a 556 can is good to have for your 556 guns. That said, selecting the can is very important, as again, this has massive gas issues. Combined with a gun like a Mark 18 with more gas issues is going to have a lot of issues. So, make sure you pair accordingly. Gemtech G5, we do not recommend simply because at this point there's way better 556 dedicated can technology out there. Um, I don't know if you see it for 100 bucks and you got some cans already, maybe check it out. Again, super quiet. I haven't tried it on a bolt gun, I'd like to. But for a semi auto rifle, such as a AR 15 or SCAR or MCX, I do not recommend. The Silencer Co. Osprey 40. I do not like the Osprey series at all. Sims oversold them by far, in my opinion. Do they work? Yes. But why buy one when there are many better cans out there? Again, in my opinion. The only thing I like about it, other than the appearance, is that it won't wind itself off your pistol because of the imbalance. Also, when it does try to wind off, it is very noticeable. Why don't I like it? Well, it's not as quiet as everyone, including Silencer Co., made it out to be. So, a little bit of irritation there. So, I guess I'm not so annoyed as the can itself as I am with the marketing. Also, depending on your gun you run it on, it physically runs into a weapon light if you have one, and with my Glock sights, I still can't see over the can with normal height sights. That said, I shoot both eyes open, and it isn't an issue, plus I have a red dot. But again, so many people hype this thing up. This was the can that taught me to not go chasing deals. In all fairness, a lot of my issues with the Osprey series are based on complaints about its inability to fit in with my own system. If I ran an Osprey 45 or 45K on an FNX 45 Tactical, I would probably like it more. Another issue is even the guns it would go on with an X300 mounted as well. The gun can't go in a suppressed pistol holster as the can is in the way in most cases. Keep in mind this is with a Glock. So a taller gun might not have that issue. I think I've seen Lucas Bakken with T-Rex Arms running an Osprey on a USP in his suppressed pistol holster, the Ragnarok SD. So it can be done, it's just not as versatile as the other cans. Overall, we do not recommend the Osprey line whatsoever, not just the 40. We just think there are better cans out there, including probably from Silencer Co. The CGS Mod 9. This gun is out fucking standing. So far, I used it on my Glock 17 and HK P30SK. It does everything I need it to and is very quiet. Also, many striker fired guns, especially Glocks, can be finicky with them. In fact, Glocks are somewhat notorious for being poor suppressor hosts, especially if you are unwilling to modify them. As it happens, the Mod 9 was designed for the Glock 1917 and it works great on my 17. CGS Mod 9, full size, highly recommend. Next, CGS Hyperion. Another outstanding can. One of the reasons we went after this is because of the high praise of performance it got from both Alabama Arsenal and Pew Science. Not just in sound performance though, but method and quality of build. The design does so many good things outside of just sound management. While it is huge, it is very effective on my 300 Blackout MCX. Also, this does great on my 6.5 Freedmoor, but I don't hear as much of a difference as I thought I would between it and my Gemtech 1. I got this with the intention to use it on the 6.5 for hunting. However, it has a taper before the threads, as does the SIG MCX barrel, so they made up pretty well. On the flip side, my Savage High Country and Gemtech 1 do not have tapers, so they made up pretty well. Therefore, in the spirit of matching things without adapters, I might keep the Hyperion on my 300 Blackout and run the 1 on my 6.5 Freedmoor. One thing I can add about the Hyperion though is it is a very large silencer, so depending on what your needs are, it may not be for you. CGS Hyperion thus far, we do recommend. Dead Air Mask HD. 
great and quiet. I just wanted the quietest 22 I could find. Based on research, it is probably in the top three. As far as I'm concerned, it has been great. There hasn't been a lot to report with this can, as I don't use it a ton. However, I can maybe confirm it is literally backyard quiet. Maybe I can confirm that. Some things I were looking for in this can were baffle design, versatility, and sound. Its closed baffle design means for easy disassembly. I wasn't so concerned about weight or size, especially as most 22 cans are not large and they often weigh little either way. This can is so versatile I can use it on a 5.7. I liked the look of the CGS cans, but I wanted one more capable than their aluminum Hydra. On the flip side, I didn't care for the look of the stainless steel Hydra. As for the other competitors, the Q El Camino or Rector, they were highly acclaimed, but I didn't care for their appearance either. The only one left I was considering was the Thunder Beast Arms Company Model 22 Takedown Suppressor. However, reading forums and watching videos, the mass seemed to edge it out just a tad. That said, if I got another 22 can, I would buy the 22 Takedown. Nothing wrong with the mask, I just want to hear the difference for myself. Mask HD, recommend. So overall, cab rounds and variables just don't chase sound. When I select a can, I start with sound performance, but then I look at other factors that might change the game as far as what, I'm, what can I'm choosing. One can might be quieter than what I'm considering, but maybe it isn't as durable, or it's too long, etc. Look at things like manufacturer, are they good? How is their aftermarket and customer support? Are they gonna be around in 10 years, more than likely? Mounting, how does it mount? How resilient is it? Does it have repeatable accuracy? Construction, 3D printing is going to be a big sell for me in the future. And another thing is pedigree, something like Surefire. Not only do they have very robust products, but they're a very renowned company that is probably going to be around in well over 10 years from now. So something else I want you to consider when you're looking at them, um, or when you buy one, is put lithium grease on the booster piston if you use one. So that's where... Uh, when you fire, piston pushes out so that the gun can cycle if it's a browning action or some variant of that, because there are variants of that. Um, regular blowback pistols like a PPK or an M9, the barrel's fixed, so you don't need those, so you'd have a fixed barrel spacer. Anyway, the point is you need to grease the piston, otherwise that can lead to issues. The GM45s did run better on guns after it was greased. Now, still less than ideal, but that's an example right there. Uh, the Osprey greased on day one, and that actually cycled fine on everything. It's just for those other seemingly nitpicky reasons that I don't care for it. So something else to consider with the design. First of all, rifle suppressors, in theory, generally clean themselves. So you don't have to worry about that. But pistol, 22 suppressors, they do not, and they get fouled up. And the designs with like a K-baffle, where it basically looks like that and that. So um, force comes through, diverts out and then keeps going. Well, if you've got your tube here where the baffles fit in, dirt gets between them, makes it hard to remove the baffles for cleaning. Also something like a monocore design, which I complained about. Um, again, grime is gonna get between the monocore and the tube, making it hard to take apart. So, a uh, good one that Silencer Code did was they have a clamshell around the baffle, the monocore baffle stack on their Sparrow 22, and then the tube goes over that. Awesome design, love that. It kind of put it in the running initially. Next is there's M baffles or conical baffles that all stack up. And basically the baffle comes around, touches the next baffle. So they kind of go like that. And so the way it happens is it keeps, again, grime out from getting between the baffles and the tube. So something like the Mask HD, that was one of the biggest, most important things for 22 can for me. So that was another thing that put certain cans in the running over others. Uh, the Mod 9, it has a baffle stack where the baffles are, they call them the arrival and baffles, I'm talking them a little bit. They're kind of like a modified M baffle, uh, as I understand it. So anyway, the point is, think about suppressor maintenance when you're looking at suppressors. Another thing I recommend is consider looking at suppressors as individual items and not accessories. Guns come and go, but your suppressors, for now, will stay, uh, at least until they're off the NFA, which may never happen. I do recommend considering your needs and then buying for that. Example, having a couple 30 cal cans and a 5.56 can gives you some great versatility. Do start with a semi dual can, and what I mean by that is not a straight up dual can, something that does every caliber under the sun as long as it's 0.46 bore or smaller, I'm saying get like a 30 cal rifle can. Don't worry about pistol right away. 
depending on your needs, branch out from there. Second can, 556 five, dedicated, or 9mm. Uh, you know, unless you don't have any 30 cal rifles and you only have 556, five, then get a 556 five, dedicated. It is nice to switch between a 556 five, can and a 30 cal can when you're working around some of your gun issues or trying to tune them. So, for instance, on my MCX, when I had 11.5 barrel in, uh, it was gas here in my Mark 18. Stock to stock. Uh, then stock setup. So that's where I was like, holy cow, I can't even finish zeroing this gun. So I was able to switch out to the Gemtech 1, because it could switch to Bylock, and that's how the rifle was set up. Well, it was a pistol at the time. But <laughs> anyway. Um, so the Gemtech 1 went on, because 30 cal can, bigger bore is going to allow for more gas to pass through. Made it bearable. Still not brilliant, but again, bearable. Some of the most important advice I can give is do not just buy a can because it's cheap, inexpensive, or a good deal. You will likely end up with a disappointment that you paid a $200 tax stamp for, and it will be incredibly hard to get rid of it. Make sure that you do your research on what can you want is going to work for you and what you're going to use it for, and then buy that can. And really, price should be the last thing you are concerned with. One other thing I'll add is don't discount a suppressor just because it isn't hearing safe. Again, depending on what you're using it for. So there's some K cans that aren't hearing safe or they're barely hearing safe versus something else. Again, it just depends on the use. So I, I try to avoid cans that, that aren't hearing safe, but something you want to consider is ones that are hearing safe can still be extremely loud and damage your hearing. You need to remember that 140 decibel line one is hard to manage so check out Pew Science and don't go off manufacturers websites or their decibel tests but also you need to consider that that's for one shot not many shots so if you're mag dumping into some trash 2016 style with your AR just because it's hearing safe doesn't mean your ears are protected so in a lot of cases you should be shooting with ear pro on anyway now, some of the stuff is extremely quiet, like my Subsonic 22, Subsonic 300 Blackout with that Hyperion, extremely quiet. Even Sub 9, Subsonic 9mm. So, 5.56, I recommend hearing protection anyway. So understand that when you use it indoors in an emergency, anything to take the edge off, especially cut down on the concussion from firing indoors, it's going to be a good thing. There is consideration on trying to get a CGS Mod 9 SK, and that's just because of the intended use of it. And it is probably a loud can, as many people would say, but it still has a very specific use, kind of like that Aurora 2. It's not James Bond quiet, even though it looks like a James Bond suppressor. It's a small suppressor. It's got limited use. It gets louder with every shot. It's got a very specific use. So don't go chasing decibels. And also remember that you shouldn't buy a can just because it's cheap. At the end of the day, we just simply wanted to impart some knowledge and lessons learned along the way. We were originally going to make a suppressor advice video, but decided that something like this would be a little better, especially in terms of execution and explaining what we're talking about. This is James Donaldson with The Contemporary Gentleman, and until next time, keep your composure.